Hello dear friends, thanks for joining me today. Uh, the reason I wanted to record this video is to share a little bit more about Power Automate and to be precisely about user input. So what is user input in uh, Power Automate? Let's have a quick look. You see, when I create a flow, right? Uh, let me create an instant cloud flow. And I'm going to manually trigger this flow. You see, if I expand this column here, there are options to add input. Let's have a look. Uh, so basically, we can add text, a checkbox, yes, no, file, email, uh, number, or a date. And what it means, it means that when I add this input, when I trigger the flow, so when the flow starts, and I submit this input into the flow, then this input becomes available for each of the actions in the flow. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I have a, uh, some text I want to add, right? Uh, I would call it, uh, I don't know, employee name, just uh, out of top of my head, a simple example. And uh, then I can add a yes, no. So by default, you see the default value, it would be yes or no. And depending on you know what, what is selected when the flow starts, then this variable becomes available there in the flow. So yes, no, uh, let's see, uh, st uh, okay, active status. So it means that employee is active or not. Right. If yes, then the employee is active. And also I can do the same for each of the inputs, uh, but you get the idea. And after that, uh, in the next steps, I can use it. So as an example, um, I can uh, maybe work with uh, Excel, right? If I work with Excel, I can save this uh, information if, if needed or I can uh, put it in some logic, you know, create conditions, uh, you know, whatever is needed. But uh, you get an idea. So let me just keep it really, really simple. And uh, let's say I want uh, to email this information, right? I create this email connector. Then I uh, put some uh, user's email address. So I put my user and then um, let's say new employee, something like this. And for the content of the email, I can put uh, the employee name is, and you see here under dynamic content, I have these things available. Things like um, what I have here, date, timestamp, full address, country, region, employee name you see that's exactly the one that corresponds to my um my input right employee name is one thing and uh, there should be also something with a uh, active status so here i'm going to select employee name and uh, uh, with the following status and the status of this employee will be status active status right so I save it and then when I trigger this flow as I said it's a really extremely simple example and the main goal for it is just to give you understanding that it's possible to add input to, to your flows and it could be different types of input. So let me test it. I'm going to use the flow checker. It shows zero, uh, zero warnings, right? Test, manually test. You see, it asks me for connection to the mail now. Uh, and when I run the flow, you see, that's what I get. I, I can put the name. Let me say uh, John, John Smith, right? And for the status, I can put active or, or not active, right? 
for, for some reason doesn't switch back but okay let's keep it as active i run the flow done and the flow failed because the connector is currently restricted for new tenants okay it means that the connector does not work but um anyway you get an idea uh my connector does not want to work uh it's something on microsoft side you see microsoft is working on enabling this connector or we can use alternatives so uh, let me try to use an alternative here i just go back to edit the flow i delete this connector let me just copy this one before i delete it i copy this delete this connector and now i'm going to add a new connector outlook let me try office 365 outlook and send an email that's a previous version of the connector that can be used with office 365 i sign in and here i paste the same for the user i specify my user and here i put a new um, employee now i save it okay so the flow is saved i run the test once again i do it manually uh, for the first time it asks for permissions to establish this connection uh, john john smith is the employee name and active status i set it active and it's interesting but i cannot switch it back to to not active i run the flow shows done you see both actions are completed i can look in the history you see it, it that's the information that was sent and i can also check in my mailbox if i go to outlook to make sure i receive this message i go to mailbox it takes a moment to upload and you see here is this new employee you see the employee is this and the status is true uh, so to summarize one more time when we use user input it could be done in different use cases uh, but the thing is to remember for user input you can uh, add multiple types of input for example you can add a specific file let's say an employee picture or you can add a specific email when you receive an email then it could be used as an input uh, that the flow can handle and also a number or a date things like that so these are the basic types of input thanks for joining me today have a wonderful day and happy learning bye bye